Assalamualaikum. Today we'll be taking a nice casual look on the entire upper limb. We've done the hands and the cubital fossa before. Now we'll see everything together. So this in front of you is the right upper limb. Let's start with the top side. Over here, the bone you see protruding out is the clavicle. Here is the sternal end of the clavicle. On the other side is the acromial end. But you can see how there are so many numerous muscles covering this region. This fan-shaped muscle in front with the nipple seen is obviously the pectoralis major. If I avert it, you can see how you have several different vessels and nerves reaching that region. This is the pectoralis minor. Both are fan-shaped muscles. Over here, I'll put a green pin on the pectoralis major. We can see how from this region onward to this, on the shoulder, we have the deltoid muscle. You can see how it extends from the anterior border of the clavicle and then covers the, uh, the shoulder joint. And here it inserts right at this point on the deltoid tuberosity. And between the pectoralis major and the deltoid, you can see a deltopectoral groove. This is the same groove which allows the passage of the cephalic vein, but that vein is not visible here. Uh, bits of the cut vein eyes, however, you can see it over here. I'll pass a light blue pin through this. You can see a bit of the vein has been severed. And uh, it was originally passing through this groove and it was coming from the thumb side portion. So we'll just leave this over here. And then for the deltoid, I'll just put a pin right over here. This is the deltoid. Remember the deltoid has, we see, anterior, posterior, and the medial fibers. Going up a little on top side, we can see how from the back side of the clavicle, over here, we have the attachment of the trapezius muscle. And you can see how the trapezius, we're only seeing one part of the muscle. The others are the ascending part and the descending part on the back side. I'm going to turn this around a bit. And you can see how these fibers coming from the back side of the clavicle and they're also inserting to the superior border of the spinous process. What I'm passing my finger on actually is the bony spinous process. This in entirety is the scapula. It's covered with so many muscle layers. Here is a flap of that same trapezius. These are the descending fibers. Here are the horizontal or lateral fibers and obviously the ascending fibers have been cut but they are the ones which attach on the neck. So let's put a pin on the trapezius. Here we have the descending fibers and over here we have the horizontal fibers and this is all above the spinous process. Were I to remove these fibers then below this we can appreciate the supraspinous muscle because it's lying in the supraspinous fossa. We can't do that, but we can see this. If you look down below, right below the spine, this is the infraspinous fossa, which is the infraspinous muscle. So I'm passing a green pin right over here. And uh, if I go even further down, other muscles of the rotator cuff include the teres minor and the teres major. And look how they're making a split here. You can see there is a passageway over here. This passageway allows the passage of the circumflex scapular artery. The artery will be difficult to see here because it's quite small, but if I were to pass a probe through this, you can see how from the front side, from the axillary artery, you see fibers, and from them, the circumflex femoral artery will be sending its branch towards the back side. That back side you cannot appreciate because it's not been colored, but this is the upper triangular fossa. You can see how it's passing through between the two heads of the teres major and the teres minor. If I were to go laterally, this is the head of the triceps. This is forming the lateral border over here. And if I were to avert the deltoid and look over here, we can see a very nice quadrangular space and in the quadrangular space you can see numerous structures coming out 
the fibers which you see coming to the deltoid those are the fibers of the axillary nerve they pass through the quadrangular space and supply the axillary nerve the other is the circumflex humeral artery remember here we had the circumflex scapular artery a small branch over here and over here we have the circumflex humeral artery so i'm going to pass a yellow pin on the nerve right over here let's use a longer pin it's quite narrow region it's also difficult to hold up here look i'm passing a pin through the let's put it near the end fibers and for the artery i'll pass a long red pin on the circumflex humeral femoral, uh, the humeral artery right over here right next to the vein the vein is very easy to appreciate because of the blue color but the artery not so much and obviously below this since the teres major cuts off the lower side of the quadrangular space down below we have the inferior triangular space this was the superior triangular this is the quadrangular and this is the inferior triangular this is made mostly by the two heads of the triceps in some books they would put the humerus and what's easy to see here is actually two structures one is a nerve and one is a vessel this one in red they're both red because of the color wash out but the one i'm passing a pin through that is the artery passing on the back side and the one beside it is the nerve the radial nerve here we can see the radial nerve and the profunda brachial artery so these two are passing in the inferior triangular space there's a lot of contents here in the triangular spaces so this was the back side coming back to the front side once again now let's see the scapula from the front surface for that i'm averting it some of you may have noticed the most prominent thing seen here are these two giant lumens seen here the one smaller one which is more patent and thicker is the axillary artery the one beside that is actually the axillary veins so blue for the vein and red for the artery right over here a very nice artery still patent let's not damage this one and you can see a whole host of branches passing out this is the serratus anterior the boxing muscle because it allows protraction of the scapula the serratus anterior if we were to lift it since coming from the medial border lifting it down and below we can see the subscapular muscle because lines the subscapular fossa so let's put a green pin on that too and with that now i could all go all day and point out all these branches but i want to just show, pick out the major prominent structures because those are the ones which are usually picked in the spotting um let's see this brachial plexus here along with the axillary vessels originally all this was covered in an axillary sheet the sheet has been disrupted and you can see all of these structures over here so what i will do first and foremost is first isolate the nerves and show the roots of the brachial plexus now you see here i am holding up in my fingers three different nerves actually here now pay close, close attention over here one nerve is actually piercing the cracobrachialis muscle the muscle actually has been damage but you can see how it was passing through this muscle this is the cracobrachialis muscle right on the medial side of the and you can see here how this nerve is passing through the cracobrachialis and ultimately ultimately this nerve is giving off all these branches to the biceps brachii and the brachialis muscle below so this must be the musculocutaneous nerve coming from the lateral cord i'll use a thick one to show the cord this is the lateral cord and i use a thin one if i can find the thin pin right over here to show the musculocutaneous nerve once again you can see how the branches are extending to the biceps brachii and the brachialis below so here we have the musculocutaneous nerve and let us just put for good measure green on the biceps brachii okay 
So muscular cutaneous nerve is on its own section. You may see, notice some of these nerves tend to stick to each other. This, these are variations or due to the uh, preserving preservation process, sometimes these nerves get to stick with one another and might get confusing. But here it's quite evident this is muscular cutaneous due to the fibers reaching the brachialis and the biceps brachii. The next route to see here is the one in the middle. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but let me pass a small thing over here. You can see how this nerve actually is composed of two roots, a medial and lateral cord. The medial and lateral cord combine to form the median nerve, the longest nerve and the one in the center. You can see how this median nerve passes the cubital fossa, and then it enters right below the pronator teres. This is the pronator teres, and you can see how this nerve is passing underneath it. It's actually passing between the two heads of the pronator teres. Put a green pin over here on the pronator teres. And the nerve itself, we will put a yellow pin. I'm grabbing out of pins here, so let's just put this over here to showcase the median nerve. And finally, finally, on the medial most side, from the medial cord, you can see how the medial cord is not only giving this nerve, but the part of the median nerve. This is the ulnar nerve. And you can see how the ulnar nerve is passing underneath the medial epicondyle. That's why sometimes, you know, when you have a direct impact or injury on your elbow, on the medial side, you get this jolt of electricity. That's due to because the nerve is getting damaged or irritated. So this ulnar nerve over here you can see all these three major nerves of the arm and obviously this vessel in the middle covered with these vena committants this is the brachial artery the brachial artery will remain in correlation with the median nerve right over here so that everything is seen in situ let's move on down to the cubital fossa right over here now over here we can see how the median nerve is medial to the brachial artery and how the muscles are forming the boundaries of the cubital fossa. Here we can see on the lateral aspect the brachioradialis muscle. This is the same one underneath which you can see the passage of the radial nerve. The same nerve we saw on the back side ultimately will come forward and pass underneath the brachioradialis. Mm, let's see if we can find that radial nerve. I see a bit of orange here, but uh, it's not that prominent. But the radial nerve ultimately passes underneath the brachioradialis and above the supinator muscle to finally reach the backside of the hand. It also passes through the snuff box. We'll get to this in a moment. The other muscles on the medial side are obviously the flexor muscles, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis. You can even see the palmaris longus, very thin and it's broken. And the flexor carpi ulnaris right over here. You can see how the flexor carpi ulnaris and within it we can see how the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery both are passing. As a matter of fact, at this point where the brachial artery ends, it divides into two vessels. You can see how one vessel is going pretty deep inside while the other one is on top. This is the radial artery going to the radial side and the ulnar one is going deep but we can see it come out over here. The radial and ulnar arteries will meet at the palmar anastomosis right at the hand. All of this red you see here is the superficial palmar arch. Blood supply from here will pass through this arch into the digits and fingertips and ultimately will anastomose with the radial artery. So obviously if any vessel was damaged there will be composition of the other side. To keep in mind these are major vessels so cutting the wrist will obviously damage these vessels, particularly the radial because it's so superficial. And uh, other muscles you've already, you've already covered in when we were doing the forearm, we can see basically how beneath the flexor carpi radialis, we can see the flexor digitorum superficialis. And if I were to remove this below that, the flexor digitorum profundus, you can see all these multiple digits here. Look at all these white tendons. These are all the multiple digits from the flexor term profundus and the superficialis on top. Both will reach the digits of the hand, but since the skin is still on there, you cannot appreciate those. What we can appreciate, however, is how the muscles on the back side coming up front and forming the snuff box. You can see the 
extensor digitorum longus and the abductor pollicis brevis as well as the abductor pollicis longus and you can see how the radial nerve is present in the snuff box right over here aside from that over here we can see the extensor digitorum notice how we have multiple digits over here put a green pin on this one extensor digitorum and right beside it we have the extensor digiti minimi indices is actually part in the front over here but it's not seen very nicely and also obviously we have the extensor carpi ulnaris remember on the front we have the flexor carpi here we have the extensor carpi and over here the good thing is that the extensor retinaculum is still intact this over here what you see the tendons passing underneath is the flexor extensor retinaculum the flexor retinaculum is disrupted but the extensor one is still there you can see how these tendons will ultimately form the dorsal digital expansion on the heads of the metacarpals with that said these are the major structures which i will be pointed out in an osp if you know these ones then you're good to go actually there are a lot of other minor things which are there but we really have to dig deep for them that is not recommended in an osp because obviously the those things which are superficial intact and nicely seen those are the ones that should be asked actually thank you so much for joining us inshallah we'll do another specimen next time allah peace